Light and Truth by Robert Benjamin Lewis. This book was published, Light and Truth, collected from the Bible and Ancient Modern History, first published in 1844. Let's go to page 124 first. Uh, chapter 3, Antiquity of America. Pay close attention, please. America was first settled by the Israelites, Indians who came out from Egypt. The view of the Hebrews by Ethan Smith. Remember, the Israelites came out of Egypt. America was discovered by Columbus in 1492 and was peopled by colonies in AD 1620 from Europe. The first settlement in New England was made at Plymouth in the midst of a fertile country. Uh, the Egyptians were an Ethiopian people. All right. Let's go over to page 276. America was originally peopled by Christian nations, which lived mostly by hunting and fishing. The Europeans who first visited these shores treated the natives as wild beasts of the forest and hunted the Indians down with dogs and guns. The people of God who were murdered by thousands, so they're calling the Indians the people of God. I'm right here again. Look. The people of God who were murdered by thousands, men, women, and children under the act made by Congress in cold blood murder to obtain their land. Woe unto the nation, the United States of America. Wow. All right. Africa's Gift to America by J.A. Rogers. All right, uh, copyright 1961. Okay, I'm going to page 29. All right, page 29, let's go down to the bottom here. The Spaniards considered Indians just one step above the beast. They called them gente sin razón. That's people without reason or people with no purpose. Finding them unwilling and useless. <laughs> laborers, useless laborers, they massacred them and fed their flesh to dogs. Las Casas, let's focus that. Las Casas account of this is one of the most horrifying of all documents on man's inhumanity to man. They even sent Indians to be sold in Europe. Columbus himself took 400 for sale there in 1498. And this shows that you blacks that say the Indians were not sold as slaves, you don't know anything about history. Y'all need to just be quiet. Shh. Let's read that again. They even sent Indians to be sold in Europe. Columbus himself took 400 for sale there in 1498. The early American whites were almost as cruel. Connecticut whites massacred the Pequot Indians. Infants were torn from their mother's breasts and hacked to pieces. The heads of the parents were chopped off and kicked about in the streets. Governor Bradford wrote, it was a fearful sight to see them frying in the fire and the streams of blood quenching the same and terrible was the stink and stench thereof. But the victory seemed a sweet sacrifice and they, the whites, gave praise thereof to God. You can't make this stuff up. Watch this part here. These salvages could be savages. These savages, as they call them, had no rights that a Christian, that a Christian European was bound to respect. Had the pilgrims touched some Europeans shore and seen their baskets of corn, wouldn't they have considered that theft? Later they were to capture Indians and sell them as slaves in the West Indies. Wow. As a result, Indians all over the New World developed an apartheid, apart, apartheid psychology. 
Patrick Henry tried to overcome that in Virginia by proposing intermarriage. This is why a lot of Indians are very whitewashed. All right. But nothing came of it. Over all the two Americans, Indians still live to themselves. The Indian reservations in America foster this apartness, even thought most of the dwellers there are only traditionally Indian. For instance, the Shinnecock Indians of Long Island, among whom I have been, are indistingu indistinguishable from Harlem Negroes. Wow. According to Virginia law, an Indian is only so on the reservation.